Ryan, answer me this question. You ready? Ready. If you could go anywhere at any time, where would you go? So we can go anywhere. And it's... <laughs> oh, man. I love that question. I feel like you want me to answer it, but I feel yeah. like that's... Oh, man. I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I would... You know what? If it's anywhere at any time, I would like to go like a super far into the future as possible. Like we're talking like Futurama. Like I'd like to see that kind of transition, you know, fall into the fall into the the cryogenic thing and then like just wake up in the future and just see what the world is like. Uh, like or even the Captain America thing. Why don't you even start with that? Uh you know, Captain America, fall into ice and just wake up in a whole new world and then be all super soldiery. I dig Ooh. that. What about you, buddy? I you're braver than me, man. I'm too scared of the future. I'm not touching the future of the 10 foot pole. Uh, I would love to see a lot of stuff in the past, but I think if it's going to be a place where I'm going to be hanging out for a, like a while, like I'm going to spend a big chunk of time and hang around, I'm going to New York city circa 1977. and just walking, drinking in the sights of what it used to look like before Giuliani got his hands on it and cleaned it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear what you're what you're saying, though. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, yeah, but that'd be uh, that'd be an interesting time for sure, for sure. Yeah. Speaking of interesting times, we're all about to have one because it's Infinity Rewatch. Oh, what? Well done. Well done. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm Andrew Fantasia. What's up? I'm Ryan J. Whitehead, and this is Loki episode four. Uh, oh God, I forgot the title. And I was planning on saying the title out loud. The the quantum event or something. The the, the event quantum of mania. <laughs> the quantum of solace. Uh, oh, well done. <laughs> what was it called? The event of solace. There's there's a Q in it. I'm pretty sure there's a Q in it. I guess it's not important. Uh, but that's what we're talking about today. And mm-hmm. what an episode, Ryan. Um, what do you think? Just you, Least just favorite what... Marvel thing ever. Just, just when you think like this show is like the the just show just, just when you think the show kind of gets its rhythm, when it gets its rhythm, and you're you're just in for the ride, it's it's one of those things where the ride just now just takes off even crazier. Like you know, in a roller coaster, you just like you know just that's what we were doing. We were just. And then we just went down the hill. It's like, oh my god! And just freaking out, and just you know, back like ah, and then, ah, and then. Uh, I wish everybody could see what you were doing right now. I can't wait for the video part of this to go up. <laughs> which is which is important, and why that you should d- digest this content in both ways by checking out our podcast and making sure you smash smash that follow button, follow it, and then you could also check it out on YouTube which is equally as entertaining because what I just did. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to describe to you people what Ryan just did because you need to be there and you can be there on the Rebel Scum Podcast Detours YouTube channel, which is where you'll find this a day after it drops on the Audible format of podcasting. Uh, We go Audible first and visual because alphabetical order, that's how it works. (laughs) <laughs> there you go and uh but yeah so going back to it this is <laughs> <laughs> so so okay um yeah just when you think you get into the rhythm rhythm of it and um really first of all i have to say to our listeners out there guys i'm sorry we fell into the trap again uh with the speculation of loki having a time stone and like things going oh. the way they did um but what I will say is Marvel still finds a way to tell this very human story with a very unique language to it. First of all, I love the the line they always say for for all of time, always. I think mm-hmm. that's it what it is. And it's funny because time, the word time now, especially in this world, it acts as a pun, really. It, 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 or sorry, yeah, yeah, it acts as like a, 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 wor- a word that has dual meanings, right? Um, because they have like their own timeline, which represents all of time. 
Yeah. Um, uh, but also, you know, time, like the, you know, the measure in which, you know, we measure the, uh, our, our history. Yeah. <laughs> let's leave it at that. Anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, man, where to begin like this, I, out of all the outcomes, um, I think the, the most beautiful thing I got to say, and the most hilarious thing is the love story here. The, the love is a dagger. It, that's like, oh man, I, I don't know what to say. Like it, I, I wanted to say it was going to happen and I wanted to be that person like, oh yeah, this is going to happen. But to be fair, I didn't think it was going to happen. Like, I didn't think they were going to do it because it would, it just, I think the reason why I didn't think it was going to happen, my friend, and I'll let you chime in here is that it just kind of felt cliche. Like it just felt like mm -hmm. so cliche, but the beauty of it is, is all the variables make it not cliche because he, because like he falls in love with himself like and, and and mobius calls him out on it that's exactly right man like you, you've you put it so well like i didn't even think of you know we spent all of last week with them on a train bonding mm -hmm. never once for a second did i think this was going anywhere romantic i just thought you yeah. know she's doing her thing she's either a loki or she's enchantress whatever it doesn't matter she's doing her thing yeah and I just went with them, you know, just being sort of reluctant partners, uh, trying to survive a situation. I didn't, there was no, romance was completely off my radar. Uh, and then we get to this moment where this planet's about to go and they kind of look at each other and they, they touch one another's arm. And I'm like, uh oh, okay, well, maybe this is just, you know, we're in the face of doom let's just hold another human because we might die. Yeah. And then they push it further and you're absolutely right. I would initially think like, ah, oh, we don't need to throw in a romance for Loki. Who cares? But this idea of him falling in love with a person because that person is him is perfect because that's what's wrong with Loki to begin with is mm -hmm. he's the narcissist. He's, he's scared of being alone um he, he's always building himself up i'm burdened with glorious purpose like that says it all that's pure ego so your savior is here <laughs> your savior is here so it's all it, loki in and of himself is a love story it's a a self love story because if he doesn't love himself no one will so it's this really weird uh tragic love story so to throw an actual love story between two separate entities into it is kind of the next logical step. Uh, so I'm really curious to see where that goes. And I think speaking of love, I think I'm going to, I'm going to double down on something here. Okay. Hit us, because, hit us buddy. Take because we've, we've got uh, our, my dear friend, R Ravana Renslayer, who is apparently not as good a friend as we thought she was. Mm -hmm. um, and since we know, she is uh, destined to be the one that steals the heart of Kang the Conqueror. And, you know, he will go to any lengths to be with her again. I think when we finally get to see those two together as a couple, whether that story takes place chronologically before the events of Loki or after, I think that that is going to be the thing that they say to one another, like in dramatic moments, like, my darling, I love, we'll be together for, for all time, always. Like that's going to be a back and forth between them and whether they get it retroactively from the TVA or whether they started the TVA and that slogan came from their romance. I think it's either leading to that or it came from that. So you're, so you're saying that this, uh, let me see if I wholeheartedly understand what you just told me here. You're saying that their love story, Loki's love story, is somewhat parallel in in a way to Ravana and Kang. Not necessarily parallel, um, mm -hmm. but um, I think I just think that in terms of that saying for all time, always, I think that that came from Ravana and Kang, or oh. it is going to become adopted by Ravana and Kang. Because you it's know, such it's a beautiful, dramatic thing 
to stick mm-hmm. on this bureaucracy, it feels out of place there. Right? It feels Ooh, weird. I like it. I like it. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, I wonder if these events could could ascend Kang to become a conqueror, right? Um, but I actually, when you say it this way, <laughs> when you say it this way, um, it kind of brings to mind that we know in the comics that Ravana and Kang, their, their relationship, he loves her, the whole nine yards. But the interesting detail in the MCU world right now is the TVA is made up of variants. So what, what if there is a Ravana, right? But what if this current Ravana is a variant herself? Ah, okay. So this is not the same Ravana who will be with Kang, is what you're saying. I'm saying that the I'm saying that Kang. I mean, I still wholeheartedly believe. Like, there's still a part of me that believes that the Ravana we're seeing is the Ravana because because and and the reason why I would defend this idea or this like this thesis, the reason why I defend defend this thesis is because the certain moments make me feel like something is going to happen to her and that's going to cause Kang to do what Kang does and and what Kang's known for and the whole nine yards. Um, because it again, it, like you said, with their with their love relationship, you know, that theme for all time always, because obviously if you can see time, then, you know, it's that it's that love story of like in order to be together certain events must be played a certain way and the only way you could throw those events off is is a loki is is loki is would be the perfect villain to kind of just throw that whole thing off and and amazingly still be still look like a hero in this show which blows my mind (laughs) um twice but yeah but my other thesis now that is starting to develop is like what if she's a variant and and sh- and the variant loves Kang, right? And then the jealousy begins if she finds out that, you know, like, Ooh. but like, again, the only reason why that doesn't work to me is I, that doesn't connect. And this is the beauty of the storytelling is it doesn't connect to what, like, it just doesn't, it would just be too many elements adding to a lot of things. It would add too many questions to to this story where we don't even have enough answers for the questions we already have. Yeah, I, I feel what you mean. It's it, it would be something that would need to carry on outside of the Loki show because mm-hmm. right now we only have two episodes left and we have to focus on the story we've been telling. But mm-hmm. I like where your head's at, man. And the beauty of Kang the Conqueror, I mean, what little I know of him is just that he his abilities give him so much potential to do so many things Mm -hmm. that, you know, for all we know, this could be a matter of uh, a variant loves him too. And now there's a love triangle with herself, or maybe, you know, the real Ravana wanted nothing to do with Kang. So in his fury, he created a variant and hoped that she would and started this whole mess. Like there's so much you could do with him. We don't even know if he's going to be on this show yet. Is he our next Mephisto? I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I it, honestly thought we were going to see him today. It, I thought, like, I was like, holy crap, we're going the distance. It's going to happen. And to be fair, I am both upset yet, like, okay, totally cool. Going to give him a bigger entrance because mm-hmm. Kevin Feige will do that, right? Like, Ant-Man and the Wasp were supposed to be in Civil War. Um, and Wasp was supposed to be introduced in Civil War as like the Wasp, um, but but he's like, nope, not the place, not the time, not the not the right spotlight. Again, not uh, I, I'm I am upset, but at the same time, I'm not you know angry or I'm okay with it too. I'm happy that we haven't seen. I'm I'm happy that we haven't seen him yet. But I got to say, though, when we did get that shot, I mean, first of all, that room and that set is gorgeous. Oof. Such a cool idea for uh, for the timekeepers. 
I don't know about you. Like off the top of the show, you said you would go to the future. So we've established that you are much braver than I am. But if I opened an elevator, if I was in an elevator and the doors open and there was just a huge dark room filled with smoke. And at the end of that room were three giant beings with glowing eyes sitting on chairs. I would void my bowels and probably go into the fetal position and cry. I don't know about you, but that is horrifying. <laughs> the the white eyes I thought were really cool. The piercing white eyes when you first come in and the, the fog. And, and again, guys, if you're going to do the, the 80s graffiti thing, that uh, the 80s, 90s graffiti thing that Fantasia and I like, got to have the fog. The fog yeah. sets the whole tone of the room. It reminded me yeah. of a Power Rangers set. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it just creates such wonderful space. But um, I will get. I want to talk. I want to talk more about that room later. But it was just so cool to see, in my opinion, and and it, it really created good atmosphere. Um, but yeah, going to going on about Ravana though, like the the thing that makes me think about like why her being a variant is a big deal is because what if, if, what if, yes, she is a variant, but she does love him, and that she brought this Loki because she thinks, like Lady Loki, because she thinks that having her help her to set certain events a certain way will help her get to, to Kang, and that's causing all this stuff, right? I don't know, though, but it just seems so much, and but I loved it. I, I love the theme of this episode. Um, man, I don't even know where to... And Mobius too. I I really love Mobius' story in this one. Um, uh, it's be it's a, it's a full circle character. And 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 I again, I don't want to get to the big spoiler just yet. But um, I feel like I feel like there was a moment with Mobius where all the pieces of the puzzle were about to be revealed. And we only got one one little piece, and still we we don't we don't have that momentum yet where everything's starting to fall into place. Uh huh. He oh man, that guy. Mobius has become so important to me as an MCU fan that yeah. like I know that moving forward we're gonna have a lot of uh, Contessa Allegra Valentina de Fontaine or whatever pull in her own kind of Nick Fury shenanigans. But I hope that Mobius also ends up being like a Fury-esque character and an Allegra-esque character who just kind of pops up every once in a while mm -hmm. to be like, wow, it's Captain Marvel too. I just came here to just say hi and let you know about something. Because that dude is pure gold. He's a treasure. Um, I wanted like, to... It's, it's Owen, like Owen Wilson. Like this is... I don't know how to say this because he's been a very good actor for a long time, but there's something so humbly, so humbly, there's something so humble and genuine about this character of his. Like, and I don't know how, I just don't know what he's doing. Like it's Owen Wilson's always Owen Wilson, but there's something so genuine about the writing and the way he's delivering these lines that are just so, heartfelt and you just oh man i felt every scene he was in i think he just you're right he's genuine he just he wears his heart on his sleeve there's no deception with mobius um he won't just insult you for the sake of insulting you so like when when he catches loki here and you can see his feelings are hurt and he's like, oh, you're you're an asshole, and you're kind of a bad friend. I was like, oh man, he he wanted Loki to be his friend. That, that I know. So much. Oh man, when he dropped that friend line, oh, <laughs> all the feels, all the feels. And uh, Loki had that admittedly fun comeback where he was like, wow, another uh, how did how did he put it on? I wrote it down here. Another folksy dopey insult from the folksy dope. Um, <laughs> but M Mobius dropped a line that I wanted to bring up because I thought it was kind of a neat little. Easter eggy kind of line that mm -hmm. Marvel's become so good at where he talks about how, you know, I have handled uh, gods and titans and vampires and this guy's giving me all the trouble. So I'm thinking of these titans and vampires who could possibly have come through the TVA, Ryan? Blade? <laughs> it's, 
It's... Mobius, take your pick. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, imagine Michael Morbius coming in there and talking to, to Mobius. And, Felicia! Look, man, I'm just, I'm just trying to get my darling. Just stop drinking blood, man. Just I don't know why you got to keep doing that. And stop calling it plasma. The kids are fine. You can say blood. They won't get scared. <laughs> I, I, I love that. But again, when you're dealing with a cinematic universe, language is everything. So if you're going to, you know, not that I'm not that I'm the professional writer in the room here, but I personally think if you're going to develop a universe in some way, shape or form, mentioning or name dropping anything and everything in that world makes it that much smaller in a good way in the sense of that it, it's it's existing and it's it exists and it's real and it's and it's 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 alive like it's just it's there you know yes. um and by him mentioning vampires like we know blades coming we know there's a morbius project somewhere on this side of the wall <laughs> but um but we know but now we know it's like it's it's living it's there you know what i mean and it's smart of them to drop this now, even though guaranteed there's no vampires that are going to be on the show because that's not what's important right now. But it's right. smart of them to drop this now because as wacky as Marvel is, we've got our talking raccoons, we've got our purple people with testicle chins, but we have not seen or heard whisper of Vampire One. So if one was to just show up out of the blue in like Black Widow, if, Black, if Natasha's fighting and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm Blade and this is my friend Dracula. We're here to help. We'd be like, this is weird, man. What are you doing? So slowly kind of dropping in these these hints to the people in the back of the theater, like just so you guys know, this world's got some vampires in it. Just kind of let that cook. Put that in with the sauce so you're not surprised when you taste it later. Oh, well done. Good metaphor. <laughs> So yeah, it was really it was really smart of them to uh, mm. to do that. Um, and now we we get to see how the TVA tortures people. I guess exactly is the right where word. I wanted to go next. Oh, I love that. How nice was it to see Lady Sif again? It was so it, you know honestly there was a moment of like wow Lady Sif like you weren't even in Ragnarok, which is Thor's like best movie. And to be fair, Sif's a great character. Sif really had some solid moments in Thor one and two. Like she was, mm -hmm. she was a great character to have. Um, she even had some epic moments in Agents of Shield. Like she's a, she's quite yeah. a strong MCU character that you can use. Um, so it was nice to see her again. And in the, one of the biggest comic references ever, um, which is true, uh, Loki cut her hair and he replaced it. She used to have apparently beautiful, I think it was beautiful blonde. I could be wrong. Comic book fans, you can correct me. But she used to have like beautiful blondish hair or something like that. Like it was just very lovely. And Loki cut it all off and replaced it with the troll's hair. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's how troll dolls were born. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I kind of wish Jamie Alexander walked out of that doorway with like a troll doll beehive. Uh, oh, yeah. And I like how... Not only did Loki only just cut a little bit off one side, but she shows up holding it like, oh, look what you did. <laughs> I love that. It was like the constant, like the, the nut shot, like just feeling that over and over again. I could not imagine that torture. I just, I don't want to imagine it. It just makes me cringe every time. It's like, oh, uh, I know it's, oh, that's rough. That is, that is truly torturous. Like you, in, being forced to relive something like that and he got lucky like he got a memory that's kind of okay in the grand scheme of things like yeah. imagine having imagine if that torture loop was finding out frigga died oh you know yeah. like imagine if that was the loop they stuck him in that so but i think that speaks to the fact that it wasn't frigga dying speaks to the kind of person mobius is and how he draws a line because I'm sure he set that up. I'm sure it was of his construction. Well, I'm sure that was his sense of humor too. Like it oh, just seems sure. like it's the perfect, perfect joke uh, that also works as torture. You know what I mean? Like, like something you do to a friend, you, like the way yeah. you set up and prank a friend. That's that's the way I, I feel like it's done. And not only a joke that works as torture, but and this is so true to Mobius' style, therapy that works as torture. Because the way Loki kind of 
broke the loop is to settle his difference with Sif and apologize and speak the truth. And then Mobius comes a strolling out and he's like, okay. Um, okay. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, you didn't get to it. Uh, <laughs> if Owen Wilson ever, if I was ever accused of like a crime, I just want, I request any law enforcement officials listening to this podcast, let Owen interrogate me. I promise you I will tell nothing but the truth if it's Owen interrogating me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I it's an interesting strategy because it is it is like more of a therapeutic session that he's doing. Like he, mm-hmm. he takes you through these things, but in the end, he gets all the answers he wants. Like he just finds a great way to build a relationship with somebody. And, it, and it, it, it's amazing when it pays off. Um, I... St- I, I loved what he did in this one. Like I love the, the Sif thing was hilarious, but I still have to say, I still have to say that first episode is like that first interrogation he does. And, and the interrogation scene, uh, I feel like we're getting more like film analytical here in terms of theming here, but an interrogation scene is a great way to create a relationship dynamic because you're just using you're using all these tactics in one room to change someone's mind on something. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're throwing out all these facts and like you're using all these facts and evidence to just change, to change someone's story to end up hopefully becoming the truth and, and getting, and it's just that journey of getting to the truth in one scene uh with with just dialogue and and these tactics it's it's just i i think marvel really loves that it's just it's such a great way to do confrontation oh it was brilliant and it, i don't know if it was michael waldron who wrote all of that if he's writing the whole thing but mm. it not only tells us things about loki that we didn't know but it got us to know and this this is tricky to do but we learned in that first episode almost everything we needed to learn about Mobius based on the questions he asked and Mm -hmm. the reactions he had to Loki's answers. Cause it would have been so easy for them to just give him very, you know, cut and dry bureaucratic questions. Like, why did you time travel? Who are you? Where is this? Where, when is that? And those would have got the job done as far as the TVA is concerned. Uh, and it might even have dragged some truth out of Loki, but it would have told us jack all about Mo- uh, Mobius. He would have just been the guy in the suit asking the questions. Uh, so they did something to not only his questions, but his reactions to the answers that gave us all the info we needed. And we walked out of episode one knowing what kind of guy Mobius was. Mm-hmm. That's So that, that's brilliant. That is exactly how you bring a new character into something that's been going on for 10 years and you only have 51 minutes to introduce him yeah oh man 100 percent. and i think now it's safe to say guys this is the spoiler part so if you miraculously Spoilers. if you miraculously watch this episode uh before before the loki episode first of all thank you i, I appreciate yes, that you guys yeah. want to listen to us before you want to watch a marvel uh, show. I can't say the same for a lot of the content out there I watch about Marvel. Um, I always watch Marvel first. But anyway, spoiler warning is out there. You've been warned. Um, so is he dead? <laughs> Look, guys, you let's think- just get the big spoiler out of the way. <laughs> Sam Witwicky destroys the AllSpark. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. It had to happen. They've it been did. building up to it for four <laughs> movies. I'm never giving you this AllSpark. After that, um, oh, the God. is he dead? My gut says no, and that's not just my gut saying what my heart wants to hear. But it, as we find out, I mean, not to keep jumping too far ahead, but as we find out in the post credit scene, getting pruned is not the big final death that we thought it was, because it just sent Loki somewhere else so i would imagine it would do the same to mobius i would not be surprised if next time we see mobius he's in some kind of pocket world or something full of other mobii 
Mobiosis. <laughs> um, I, I, based on based on facts uh, that I know uh, about Kevin Feige, he said no one ever really dies in Marvel. Is is what we've heard spoken from Alfred Malona about his uh, return to the MCU, based on what we know. Um, and uh, and so then you'd have to assume, and then also we've seen the evidence of what happens to Loki as well. Um, and uh, don't worry, guys, because if you're freaking out at this point, I warned you about spoilers a while ago, so it happened. Um, so I don't think he's gone. How he went, how Mobius went, though, was pretty awesome. I love seeing, I loved, I loved him being like, you know where I want to go, I want to go. I can't remember where he said he wanted to go, but he's like, and jet skis. Like, it just like, oh the, mo the, the again, a random thing that was mentioned in the first, or was it the first or second episode? I think he's, that was episode two. Yeah, Loki's got the, the jet ski magazine completely you could it's a small detail you could have completely overlooked and just like nope you know it is what it is and <laughs> exactly this fellow just said it guys who doesn't love a good jet ski but yeah i think he's i think he's gone to like a a, a pocket of time that is just like it's just like this a wasteland that completely is overlooked nothing doesn't matter what happens there yeah uh, and if if he is a variant, which it seems like everybody at the TVA is, then I would assume that this wasteland is strictly populated by his variants. The same way what we saw at the end was strictly populated by another certain kind of variant. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of TVA variants, I want to give some love. I wish I knew her name. The actress who plays guard uh, Hunter B-15. Yes. Uh, like the main uh, like hunter that we see here. First of all, she does a beautiful job when uh, Sylvie puts her magic on her and you can, we don't see what, like we don't get to be privy to what she sees, but yes. B-15 sees another life, another world, another set of memories. And that's something to me that has always kind of hit me hard. The idea of, you know, right now there's a parallel Andrew and who knows what he's doing or what he's not doing or who mm -hmm. he's doing. Uh, so the actor, the actor's name is Wunmi Ma Mas Masaku. Ma sorry, Wunmi Mas Masaku. Wunmi Masaku. Well, mm -hmm. you did a spectacular I apologize if I job. <laughs> I apologize to butchered the name, but yes, you did. A <laughs> sorry, you were saying. Yeah, she, she, she just did a, a great job when, when you see her there, her eyes are shut and you can tell she is looking at something that is hitting her right there. And that, that whole idea, I am just obsessed with that idea of like, what are the other Andrews out there and other universes doing? Um, are they happy? So the, that idea has always resonated with me and she, she rocked it. She was so good. And I think there might be a Marvel Easter egg in one scene that she has there on. I want you to clarify this for me. She looks at a poster on the wall in the TVA and there's uh, like an old fashioned comic booky looking cartoon of a man on the poster. And I think that's Mobius from the comics, isn't it? Because he had a mustache. Yes, yes it is. That's him. That's All right. right. Yeah. Nailed it. it. Nailed it. Yeah. A hundred percent. I actually, you know what? It's funny. I didn't even think of that um, when I saw it. I didn't even think of that. But then I, I remember seeing what mobius looked like in the comic for when we were first talking about mobius because i wanted to see get aligned with the comic book knowledge and everything but yeah that's exactly what he looks like his Sweet. mustache and everything so somebody's going around making little cartoons of him and putting them up in the tv yeah. that's adorable <laughs> those posters those posters though are interesting because um kang and and speaking of the timekeepers um i noticed one thing i noticed was when we got to see them the second time um which there's some things I want to get to before we fully get to that that big big scene, um, but the one thing that kind of threw me off was like they they didn't look exactly like the time like the timekeepers. You know what I mean? Like they look mm -hmm. like the ones from the like they almost look like the ones from the video. But the one the there's one that doesn't look like that the 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 one from the video and the statues. The the one in the center in the top. Does uh -huh. not look like 
the 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 statue we see in Renova uh, uh, Renova's room, or um, or yeah, or in the, uh, the 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 faces, the the faces distorted. Yeah, the statues look a lot. All three of them look a lot more Kangi, and these people, these beings that we saw, were distinctly unkangi. Uh, and distinctly less humanoid. The statues had very humanoid features, and these things did not. So it was, uh, it, you're right, it was a little bit jarring, but then as we learn, that's sort of by design, it's supposed to be jarring because something's not mm. quite right in that room. Uh, should we should we get to that room? Are we there? Okay, well, before we do, uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about. So first of all, um, Mobius, uh, trying to interrogate sylvie i would love to see that because mm. i would have i would have killed to see that um i want to see him interrogate everybody like i said he'd interrogate Captain america everybody. iron man like yeah everybody um zemo oh it'd be so good to see him do a zemo one do, um, do you want to do you want to do a web series where it's just you and me playing marvel characters <laughs> being interrogated by mobius i'll do it i will do it <laughs> I, you know, I would love to do it with you, knowing that we would be terrible. Like you would be, you'd probably do some really good ones, but for me, I feel like I just wouldn't do anyone a service. Um, but what I will say uh, about the interrogation thing, or yeah, so what I will say is, first of all, something is up with Sylvie. Obviously, something's up with Sylvie. We know something has happened on the back end that uh, something's going on, and. It's the obvious thing is about the whole. Um, the obvious thing is about her abduction, and like she was brought there, and you know she's a variant and all this stuff. Um, but and, but and then and then the interrogation thing where she covers up the camera like, oh yeah, you're not created by TVA. She's like Renova. Renova seems offended that she wasn't created by a TVA. Not like some people there's like some people it's like, I just don't believe you. She, she's like angry that like to, to come up with such lies. Like, yeah, they, there was something like irrationally angry. Like that's, that's how I would phrase it. Yeah. She was the, reactions people had are interesting because what i found really scary I, I and i'll try to explain articulately how i found it scary i can't promise i'll be able to do it but when loki tries to say it to mobius when loki says like you're all variants the the timekeepers are all lying whatever mobius gets very serious for a moment and he says bite your tongue uh, so it had this very sort of like, you know, when a little kid who's in like a religious family, when a little kid says like, oh, Jesus Christ, like when he stubs his toe and like the grandparents are like, don't you talk like that. Like it had that kind of connotation to it coming out mm -hmm. of Mobius. And I was just like, that is freaky because we never really got a sense of what the TVA employees think of the timekeepers. Do, how do they feel? Yes, they're they report to them. They're their leaders. They're their bosses, but we don't all necessarily love our bosses. So this was the first time where I I got a whiff of this almost zealousness of like I don't just report to the timekeepers like they are my one and everything, and don't you dare say their name in vain. And that scared me, man. That mm -hmm. really scared me because I'm like, okay what are they dangling over these TVA employees to make them think that? And if it is this lie, that's dark. Then the Loki and Mobius, he's got to team up and take this shit down so that all these people can go and have normal lives again. Yeah, for sure. And, and, but it, yeah, it just begs the question, like if Renova is so protocol focused and policies and procedures. If this Loki was a variant and everything, it it just seems too easy as a writing technique to just like, oh yeah, she just corrupted some soldiers and was able to break out and just run. Like it just something's clearly off about the whole thing. Um, and yeah, so I just 
I, I loved it though. I mean, I love that. I love the kind of clues they're giving us, but yeah, it's just, it's her reaction is just so weird. Um, it is. And, and to have that many guards around the door, like, mm -hmm. like it, it seems obvious. And it's one of those things where uh, maybe it, it seems obvious because it's, it, it is, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just some, it's, the, it's just the fun of the show is like something is clearly up here and what's with the blue freaking pen? It's going to be one of those things when, when all is revealed, it's going to be so freaking obvious. And it's going to, oh my God. I got the sense that Ravana Renslayer has been in on it, that she knows the truth and she has known the whole time. That's the mm -hmm. sense I get from her. And maybe it's because the 70s aesthetic of the set design is putting me in a very 70s paranoia political thriller kind of mindset but that's just how i feel i feel like she's in on it and whatever her reasons may be noble or not um i don't think it was news to her when uh sylvie or whoever it was dropped that bombshell on her i think what was news to her and what shocked her was that oh crap somebody knows mm -hmm. yeah yeah, definitely felt like that. So I think it's safe to say, so first of all, all that seems great. All that stuff's good. I love the conversation between Mobius and Renslayer because it seems like there's a love story there. Yeah, I mean, I got vibes in the pilot that he was crushing on her. And now in this office, she keeps dropping the word friend. Like, you're my friend. Oh, yeah, she friends on him so she friends hard. That him is, really oh. hard uh, but he didn't seem flirtatious or you know there was no attempted flirtation going on here and i don't know if that's because he knows where he stands now or if it's because he's too preoccupied with what loki said i think it's a little bit of both um but i still get the feeling that he you know he sees her as something more than just a pal i work with even if he considers her like a best friend, even if it's just something like that and not romantic, I do feel like he has an idea of what their relationship is and she clearly is not being honest with him. So mm -hmm. she's going to end up betraying him and that's going to hurt because I don't want to see my boy Mobius get hurt. He's oh, yeah. sad enough as it is. I don't know. I, I don't know what, what Renslayer is going to do. I just... To me, I like the idea that in order to, if you were Kang and you love someone like Renova, it would make sense to put her in a position where you can watch over her at all times. Now, it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm going to protect her. I'm just going to keep her locked away in my, you know, castle. And then, but she, but obviously he loves her because of her, like, because of her um, tenacity and, like, you know, because you don't want someone to just like just wor just worship you. You want someone that's like your partner that compliments compliments who you are. And so, Renova Ren Renslayer would make sense to me that you would put so put her in a position that she's in because it's it's she would be like the almost like the right hand of Kang, like you know the, in the I wouldn't say the instrument, but uh, but my point is is like she represents they have this common representation of what they want the world to be like and she is like the will power of of kang like you know what i mean so that's mm. it's kind of that's why i think it's like oh yeah you know it's like she 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 enjoys mobius's company because he works hard in solving the big problems uh, but in the end he is the one that's just like a tool, a means to an end, right? Yes. Um, and 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 her, it's just for she uses him to please Kang, uh, that kind of thing. Assuming that this is assuming this has anything to do, like outside, well, it does obviously have everything to do with Kang. But you know what I mean? Like it's not, it doesn't seem directly involved to Kang. But we don't know. We don't know Kang. Like we don't know Kang's involvement aside from like they're always watching. But we don't know what that means. Like, so I don't know. But um, but that scene was also interesting to me. And I also got to bring up the the significance of this pen, the blue pen, and this and this kind of the blue gum. What does blue have to do? What does the color blue have to do with anything? Is this one of those? Is this one of those uh, M Night Shyamalan things where like it represents probably the most key thing about the entire story? Well, isn't Kang blue? 
Yeah, he's blue face. He's a he blue face blue. guy. So wait, tell me about this pen because I feel like I missed the pen but here. We we didn't miss the pen. The pen we talked about in the first episode. We signed or the second first or second episode he signed something. Oh right, I, that pen. That pen. Yeah. Okay. I thought I thought it was something in this episode. I'm like, what's going on with this pen? Uh okay. So yeah, the pen, the gum, they are they could be set dressing, but they are really linked to something. I don't know. My sneaky feige radar is starting to ring. Um, don't fall into that trap, man. No, <laughs> do it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be like it means beast because he's blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't. Know. I. I. I'm just confident that the um, the gum and the pen will either be important and revealed within the next two weeks or not be as important as we think they are yeah it's it's such a coin toss but you know what that being said let's get into it let's get into the big the big foofara you mean big... that big room with the three totally real timekeepers who were actually there well yeah. let's let's get into it man first of all love that room uh, this is when we actually get a really good shot of the timekeepers, them talking. Uh, I love that they kind of like one talks, the other kind of adds on as like as if it were one complete sentence kind of thing. Um, and full, yeah, full but, disclosure. Sorry, full disclosure. Did you have trouble understanding them? Um, I'm going to say a little bit because I feel like there was a moment like I had to listen a little more attentively. But uh, but overall, I, I understood them. Okay, something with one of their voices was really like that, that, that time. Period. I'm like, man, I, I don't know what you're saying, bro. And oh, I, yeah, the I, one with the, I, the mustache skin. like my Yeah, brother. and I didn't have sub like I don't watch with subtitles on because it's all mm. English. So what? But uh, I might have to just to get a glimpse of what they were saying because it was tricky. I had to lean forward and be like, what? Um, but I don't think they dropped anything too important that I missed, right? They were just talking about, we got to kill the variants or we got to prune them because that's what we do. We're the TVA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but the other thing too that I wanted to confirm was I don't think the color of the, because uh, in the video, in Miss Minutes' training video, I feel like the color of those guys are different. But Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm nitpicking too much. But uh, but I, I do love the design of mm. the different Kangs. Like they're they're really cool. Um, they're supposed to like in the end when when you when you see the council of Kangs, they're all like different variants of him. Like they're all they're all different Kangs, essentially. Um, so yeah, but I loved uh, I loved them in their chairs and and the, the the costumes were just just gorgeous. Like just. The, the set design and the, the just the costume department, like ever since the Russos took over, the costumes and everything just been on point. I don't mm. care what people say about the Whedon first one. No, no, doesn't count. Doesn't count. Wasn't as on par as when the Russos took over. Still my favorite Cap and Iron Man suits. Not going to lie. Avengers 1, give me that Cap and that Iron Man any day of the week. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I will agree it's America's America's ass. But, oh yeah, uh, but 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 uh, speaking it's of not acids. his best one. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's I don't know the blue, the bright blue. At his least end I game hope... costume, man. His end game costume alone. I hope at least they use that bright blue color scheme for the Fantastic Four's costumes. That's all because yeah. it mm -hmm. it just looked right. It looked right. Actually, um, I'd say that that Captain America suit would be a great way to do the Fantastic Four suit. It's it's mm -hmm. sleek. It's sleek but armored. It's um, it would kind of fit the explorer kind of look. Yeah. Whereas Cap's in the military and therefore would need <laughs> better armor. <laughs> uh, but anyway. That's near here there. Uh, but yeah, the Kang outfits were, were gorgeous. So I love this scene because like, here's the thing is the Loki's goal, which at this point, again, I'm do I still kind of hope she's Enchantress in some way, shape or form, which is, I guess like, who knows? At this point, it seems very Lady Loki, but. <sighs> it could um, be a meld. It could be a meld. They do. Yeah, it could a be a meld. 
could be a, a meld. Like, like she could be Enchantress in like Loki's world, but in her world she is Loki. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. could be that kind of thing. Uh, anyway uh they they ended up getting what they wanted which was to get an audience with the timekeepers um and uh and the battle breaks out i love how it's done uh loki loki this is again an interesting play on the theme of time because this is not the first time we've seen loki be like a prisoner being presented to a king or a king-esque character Mm -hmm. um and challenging the way things are done which is really really fun to watch him kind of kind of go through exactly what thor said in ragnarok is like oh you're getting predictable it's just the same thing over and over again you know uh and that's that's kind of the fun of it is and and also they talked about it in this episode it's like it seems like we're always losing right and that's there's so many little things here that it's kind of hinting at a bigger picture that we just still can't quite see yet and when this fight breaks out mm. and all these guards are around and stuff, it, it, it made me wonder. And like, I was caught up in the heat of the moment. So I didn't really get a good look to figure out the answer to this question. But do we see, Ryan, at any point when one of the timekeepers is hit and we, and we reveal that we are, you know, we're in the Hall of Presidents at Disney World. These are not real beings. They're just big old robots. Mm -hmm. Do we see a reaction from Ravana Renslayer, either a reaction of, oh my God, I didn't know that, or, oh shit, I knew that, and now the cat's out of the bag? I don't know. I don't remember. I, I just, so much is happening in that scene. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, to be fair, even if she acted shocked, didn't seem like she was it didn't seem like she was overall like sh like it was more short term than long term it didn't seem like it had a lasting impact as if it like oh no i need to act like this is really shocking because everyone else is around me you know and then once everyone's dead it's just kind of like in the heat of the moment but that being said at the same time i mean she here's the here's another interesting thing is that these glowing stick thingies they have the the, <laughs> the prune sticks. Um, they did oh, not... I'm, gonna, I'm only going to call them that from now on. The prune sticks? <laughs> prune sticks. Copyright Ryan J. White at 2021. Did, did you not notice that they didn't really use the appropriate end of that stick? Because when they were in the Council of Kang room, they didn't use the reset side. They used the, I'm going to stab you with this side. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it got medieval in there, man. Like, there were yeah. some executions that were going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, there was some stabbing going on. And, like, though, though they're a multifaceted weapon. You can stab, you can bludgeon, you can prune. Uh, there's probably an infomercial where they sell those. I'm like, but wait, there's more. Order now. Mm -hmm. um, so we we have this fight where all these people are getting killed off. Ravana may or may not be shocked at the robots. Uh, I personally don't think she was shocked because I think she's in on all of this. But you're right. These uh, like these guards didn't have a reaction, which is strange because, again, as we learned this episode from Mobius's reaction, that's basically their three Jesuses. And we just found out it's all animatronic. So I really, I can't wait to just know who knows and who doesn't yes and why yeah and it sounds oh, like man. that's where we're going it just makes me want to like quickly like go in and review the footage now and just like just sort of like 100 percent, just make sure but um but it just seems to me like ravana i'm gonna go with the bet that ravana ravana knows she had to know she i just she seems too close not mm -hmm. to know and if if she doesn't know even for me, that that would be very surprising. Like it just, you don't you don't get that close. Same, I think she knows, um, mm -hmm. and it's it makes it all the more interesting now when she has her inevitable confrontation with Mobius, and he's like, "Why did you lie?" Because um, it, it it that that conversation needs to happen. 
Uh, yeah. And Movius, uh, he's going to be okay. Right, Kevin? He's fine. Yeah, he's Nothing totally bad. Yeah, he's, Nothing yeah, he's bad's totally going to happen. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I'm, I'm trying to quickly grab the footage right now. I just wanted to see 100% here. Um, but uh, it doesn't look like you really get to see her. You know why you don't get to see her reaction? Because I think she's knocked out. Yep, she's knocked out. She is on the uh, ground. But when she gets... Oh, yeah, when she gets up, there's a reason. Okay, so it's so we don't get her reaction because she was not... She was punched out by Sylvie. She was literally... Mighty fighting. convenient, Ravana. Yeah. Mighty convenient. But the other thing here that's interesting is the reason why we don't get to see her react is not only is she unconscious, but when she is conscious, she does the probably the biggest thing, which is take out Loki. Mm-hmm. And she again, does we're what not all the Avengers couldn't do. Which is what all the Avengers couldn't do, yeah. And here's the thing though, is what really bothers me is the sticks. Like those sticks were sharp in that room. Like <laughs> So, which blows my mind, because if this system is all about resetting people, why, oh why, in the one room with Kangs, would there be a different way to deal with people? If this, if the reset thing is like their ultimate solution, then why would they have an alternative like legit killing people? I guess the answer is because reset isn't their ultimate solution. Because you get too close to those things and you realize they're not real. You can't live to tell anybody about that. Mm. And getting pruned, as we've seen, lets you live to tell anybody about that. <laughs> yeah. So it just it begs the question, or sorry, it just kind of makes you think that Mobius is Mobius is probably alive. He's on a time wasteland of some kind. Then we get Loki and we get our first post credit sequence. Oh yes. my gosh. I wasn't expecting one till next week. Like WandaVision had them, I think, in the last two. So mm-hmm. I was kind of going still by that. Yeah. logic but oh it was great to see a post credit scene and it was a bunkers scene it felt like bunkers. a final splash page in a comic like you see the dialogue saying like come with me if you want to live and then you turn the page and you see who's talking oh like, yeah very was, marvel uh, moment. well his questions were huh and you're gonna love this his questions were how did he phrase it he's like is this hell Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. confirmed it's confirmed <laughs> and he's like am i dead and then um and then the line is is like you're not if you come with us and then we get the wonderful array of loki's yes <laughs> and we finally get to see who richard e grant is which is a variant of loki in the classic comic book loki outfit classic outfit it's beautiful we've got I guess Kid Loki, and he's carrying some kind of like Komodo dragon with him. I thought uh, it was already... a gator. It could be a gator. I don't know. I freeze framed a little bit. I, I saw a reptile skin and I was like, good enough for me. Yeah. Um, and then we got this other Loki who's really interesting because he's dressed like Thor. He's got yeah. the big old furs. He's got not Mjolnir, but a hammer looking thing that he's rocking. Mm. Um, so it's, it's I... like a cinder block or like a. Cinder block with like a wrench, but it's like a steel frame. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's heavy duty. And now I'm wondering, like, is this a variant from a universe where, like, he was the son of Odin and Frigga, and Thor is the one that the ice giants had? Like, this ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's it just brings so much to question. And oh man, but uh, great ending, great ending, uh, post credit sequence there. Um, this show has still so many questions, so many questions. What's Renova's story? What is her story? And why is Lady Loki so important to her? And to and here's the other thing is that Renova said that you're not the only one, mo- like you're not the only one working for me, Mobius. So who mm-hmm. is the other one? Right. Cause like, uh, it seems, it seems to me like Mobius is like your top tier detective. So yeah. clearly if there's another one, that's huge. It, and it goes back, you know, not to bring it back to the pen, but I remember him saying, when she showed him the pen back in, I think, episode two, and he 
he makes a comment about, oh, is this from your other agent? Uh, so I, I, again, that's leading down some sneaky, fuggy territory, but there's something there. There's something there. They keep bringing this thing up. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm pumping the brakes on that train of thought because it was the same train of thought that led us to beast and it's going to just become a rabbit hole. So I'm just going to sit back and let these two episodes happen. Like they just gave us three Lokis. I'm just going to focus on those. Uh, and let the pen be the pen until it's either just a pen or not just a pen. Mm-hmm. It sounded very Freudian, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. It just I I don't know. I don't know. And then on top of that too is, is when we were introduced to the blue gum. Um, he's like, "Who gave this to you?" And then they pointed at clearly the most Mephisto-looking mm. thing. That's that's but, pure Kevin being being a little sneaky. That's the ke- that's the Feige radar, man. That's yeah. like, Sneaky Feige, man. I don't know. It's it's gonna it's in the end at this point is I like that the theme I like that the theme is setting up that it's about love. And and I mean it seems again, it seems kind of cliche, but when you're talking about Kang the Conqueror and Renova, um, this Loki story could set up a really critical key plot thing. Um, and not only develop a, a really solid Loki story. But set up a love story between Kang and Renova, and really get the the full details of that. Yeah, this is going to pave the way for so much of Phase Four and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we'll get a season two of this show. I'm totally fine if we don't. As but... I think, I think as Kevin planned, or as I think as. Kevin said about WandaVision is that he never plans for a sequel, but is always open for if there's enough demand, then he will gladly make a plan. That's totally smart when it comes mm-hmm. to the shows, because uh, you you can just tell what you need to tell. You have plenty of time to tell it, more time than you do in the movies. But I, even if we never see a sequel to the show, which is totally fine, this concept of the variants is going to be the most important thing to happen in phase four. Just the fact mm-hmm. that they exist now. So we're going to be ba- like every, every film and possibly every show that comes out after this is probably going to be in a way, a sequel to Loki and just how much this is going to transfer into that and affect that world and throw little variants here and there. Uh, it's, it's for sure going to plant those kinds of seeds. Lots yeah. of them. Lots of them. I mean, so the other thing, the, the other thing I still, so we just talked about kind of like the, the, still the mystery of the show. But the thing I want to talk about though is the wish list, wish, wish list of the show is what do we still want to see? You know, and for me, I still want to see Kang. Again, it's, it's a weird thing. I, I want it I, as much as I want it to happen. I don't want it to happen, but I still want it to happen. You know what I mean? I want to see him. I want to see what he looks like. And I want, I, you know, the exact scene that gives you exactly what I'm looking for is I want that Guardians of the Galaxy scene where like Thanos turns in the chair and you finally hear him speak for the first time. I want to see that with Kang in, in the Loki show. Because we know we're getting Kang in the movie, like in, in Quantumania. But... We're in we're in Kang's territory. We are legit in Kang's world, and we we won't see him. Like you know what I mean? Like that seems so weird to me. Yeah, it's it's like and and we have Renslayer there. It's like if they made a Marvel movie set in New York and Mary Jane was one of the main characters, but we don't see Peter. It's like what? Why? Yeah, like, no, it's so- like it's like doing a movie about Eddie Brock and like just deciding to build an entire story without Peter Parker and just making it about Eddie Brock 100% and like then somehow bringing in symbiotes and and yeah, it's a good thing know, nobody did that. <laughs> and like, you know, because Venom existed to solely help Eddie Brock hate Spider-Man. And because they both have a reason to, to hate them, and that's what brings them together in this symbiotic relationship. So it just just blows my mind that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't tell that story. 
I hope every time they meet a new symbiote character in that franchise, they always yeah. introduce themselves by saying like, that line of dialogue where like, there's going to be riot. <laughs> there's <laughs> going to be a scream. <laughs> I mean, oh my god, it's just, there's so yeah, but that's my point though, is like we're in we're in even in Guardians, like we were not nowhere near Thanos, but one character had everything to do with Thanos and we still mm -hmm. saw Thanos. Yeah. You're you're 100% right. Uh that's on my wish list too. Bring and we in. know we know Jonathan Majors is cast, so there's yeah, no man. reason there's no reason to hide him, like unless he has probably like the most badass entrance in the in the Quantum Mania movie. I don't see I don't see why you wouldn't hype him and put him in this so you can get people excited for what he's going to do in and like and and the amazing thing is is the trailer wouldn't ruin whatever he does in the movie because we would see him already in the show and it just, you know, ta and, and it's funny cause you know, it brings us to a small little topic that I can talk about um, after we kind of wrap up everything here. Uh, but it, you know, I, it was a shame because this, the, the new song Chi trailer came out and they did your, you know, it's funny when you brought it up because I, I didn't think about it at first, but then I realized I was like, Oh yeah, they did that. But they did that Spider-Man moment when it's like, you should just hold back. Just hold <laughs> back. And I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say spoiler warning one more time. But they dropped the Abomination and Wong in the trailer. And that's something you could have saved for the movie. Because the wow yeah. factor would have been like, what? That is, I'm really bummed that I watched that trailer. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't say that often, but I'm really bummed that I watched that trailer. Uh, I'm sorry, fact, too, because I was the one that shared it to you. <laughs> it's not your fault. Uh, I actually, I was, I have uh, um, a friend of mine who, who listens to this show. Hi, Steph. Um, Hi, Steph. She, she uh, messaged me shortly before we started recording, and she said, like, oh, my God, did you hear the news about Loki episode five? And I said, no, I didn't, um, but I don't know if I want to, because... You know, the Shang-Chi thing, I, I've had enough spoilers for one month. So I asked her, I was like, oh, please don't don't tell me. I, I don't want to know. She said, okay. She, she goes, but fair warning, it was on the news. So it might be circulating. So I, I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody listening does, but I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I've got, I've got, what's his face from Spice World dressed as classic Loki. That is more than enough to get me excited for episode five. I don't need more spoilers. I'm good. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, Kang is on my wish list too. I've said it before. I'll say it again. He is a time traveling character, which means you can literally sprinkle him everywhere. You don't have to wait for plot convenient moments like you did with Thanos, where it would make sense for him to show up. You can literally have him travel everywhere because that is his shtick. Mm -hmm. uh, and nobody will complain old be like you're you're putting him in too many things no because that's that's his plan that's his evil thing that he's doing is he is being everywhere all at once so put him in uh the only other thing i have on my wish list is we got two episodes left give me miss minutes a whole bunch i i will say to add to my wish list because i only got to put one entry in there um, I would say what I'd like to see is is Malekith recreated in the show, um, especially the comic accurate. The costume. Yeah, comic accurate yeah. with the half dead, half alive, and yes. it's perfect too because that would be really fun to see. Um, and I love that actor. the The actor they casted for him is is amazing, and it's a shame mm -hmm. what they did. Um, and yeah, I'd like to sp see him speak a little more English and and have a good time with it. Uh, the other, the other. <laughs> Uh, wish list uh, character I'd like to see make a appearance in this show um, is is Thor. I would love to see Thor actually mm. somehow, somewhere, somehow be in the show. I know Thor is getting a whole other movie and everything, but again, bringing that world, you know, bringing these worlds together would be really fun. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. There, are, there's still some things I want to see, but uh, the, those are the top of my wish list right now. I just, again, I love seeing characters 
show up. That's always been Kevin Feige's. Um, Kevin Feige's even big thing about the Marvel movies is he loves doing that. Loves seeing other characters appear in shows and what have you. But that being said, like, I agree with Feige. Do it at the right time. <sighs> this time just feels like such a duplicitous mm-hmm. word now. Uh, and someone like Kang, to me, it just... That's why it's a it's a love hate thing. It just feels it just feels so right just to put Kang in the show in somewhere in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, this is the place for him. This is the literally the time and the place for him. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. So Ryan, where can the good people find you over the course of the next week until you're watching Loki again? Oh man. Well, okay, before we even get to that, next next week, guys, is the Ooh. biggest week. The yeah. biggest. Okay? We get two Marvel pieces of work here. I swear if they if they go, "Oh, because Black Widow's coming out, we're going to be like, we're going to pause Loki for a minute." I would be like total I would punch a hole through a wall. I would just knock down a wall. And I live in an apartment, so I'd knock down a wall into someone else's apartment. Um and uh so i hope they don't do that but we're getting two big marvel things next week cannot wait uh we'll probably have to bring on and on for both of them because we need to talk about the setup before the finale and and also get an update on honest feedback but then we also got black widow which has been overdue overdue this is like what two three four four years i don't know (laughs) well a, a year and, and two months, almost to it, the day, since it was supposed to come out. But it was delayed like at least two or three times. Yeah. 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 Back pre-pandemic, it was delayed a bunch. So yeah. yeah, it's finally happening. And unfortunately, I have to delay it a few days longer because I'm going to be filming all that weekend mm-hmm. when Black Widow comes out. So even though we'll be watching it on opening night... Um, We'll be working. We'll be working on yeah. opening night here, guys. We'll, like, we'll be remotely watching it, folks, because this is Canada, and there's no such thing as safety out in the real world yet here. <laughs> um, but we won't be able to podcast about it right away, at least not for a couple of days. Um, so if you're looking for that and you're like, why haven't they put up a black whale? That's the reason, is because I'm, I'm making a film right now with James Rizzoli, and that happens to coincide with Black Widow. So... Be patient with us. We will. There's. It's not like we're going to be like, no, we'll skip it. We won't do a podcast about it. Like, because that's not how we roll. No, no. If you if you could do it that day, you would. But uh, mm-hmm. but we understand that you're doing something really cool, uh, and you guys should definitely be following his social feeds about it. Um, and uh, for me, just uh, keep on checking us out here at uh, the Rebel Scum Podcast Network on the Detour uh here at planet marvel which is quite frankly the one of the best planets in my opinion um and uh yeah and uh, you can also find me over at twitch.tv forward slash xbox canada where i'm playing the latest and greatest Ooh, what are you playing right now uh i was playing this uh this week i've been playing for honor uh, because it's on game pass and game pass is wicked uh for those of you who don't know what game pass is it's a wonderful subscription that gives you access to a billion games um also i recently bought um zombies ate my neighbors the re-release of the original retro classic oh, wow. on uh on xbox and then uh the last thing is i need to revisit marvel's avengers because they have all this new content and i am actually really digging it that's right i think black panther stuff is coming out now mm. I'm not well, it's not out yet but it's coming very soon so i'm making sure i'm getting all the things i need to get done before that update drops perfect nice uh, mm-hmm. You can find me on the Instagrams and the YouTubes, Andrew Fantasia. Um, I've got a, a couple. It, it, it's been kind of dry on my channel lately because nothing new comes out here that we can see. So I haven't been able to talk about new film and stuff. But um, this summer is going to be a lot of things. I have uh, a review marathon, my, my third big review marathon coming out tomorrow, in fact, July 1st, which is where I've watched over. I take three months so April to June in this case. And in that time, I watched as many movies as I could that I'd never seen before. But the rule is they can't be new. They have to be not from this year. So I take all of those, I watch them, and then I review them as fast as possible. And the one coming out tomorrow, I have 33 films, Ryan, in less than 15 minutes. Wow. Uh, so 
look forward to that. And then I got a big thing coming up over the, the summer. Um, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that next week. <sighs> wow. Way to leave them on a cliffhanger, just like Marvel does. Just like Marvel. Cue that WandaVision, please stand by screen. <laughs> I hate that screen. I hate that. Everybody oh, hated that screen. I know. It was the worst. Well, this has been Infinity Rewatch Loki episode four. Two to go. Come on, Miss Minutes. We know you're out there. Come save the day. Mobius is fine. End of story. Thank you so much for joining us. Everybody have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.